If you're a beginner drummer who feels a little lost or confused because you've seen so many different drummers out there grip the sticks in different spots, you really only need to know two main grip positions. I'll show you exactly where these are and how to seamlessly transition between the two of them so that you're always using the ideal grip for whatever you're playing at any time. You can do this. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians others want to play with and have in their band. And we do that by teaching you the non-glamorous core drumming skills that get you results the fastest. And hey, while you're here, if you are a beginner, I have a special free gift for you. This is my 25 practical rock grooves and fills for the beginner drummer PDF e-guide. Cause see the biggest problem when you're getting started on the drums is that you usually, you wanna play your favorite songs. You wanna get up and running playing songs. That's why we get into this in the first place. And it's really frustrating when you're like, well, I don't really know this part for this song. I can't figure out this groove. What's really helpful though, is if you already know all those grooves, if you already know 25 grooves and 25 fills that are gonna show up in 99% of the pop songs and the rock songs you're gonna play, that means you can now learn those songs so much faster. So grab this guide because if you're a beginner wanting to play songs, this is gonna save you so much time and help you out so you can get up and running quickly, playing songs like a pro and having a blast. So totally free, go grab that guide just for you in the description below. All right, on with today's lesson. All right, so we're going through three main steps today. The first one is the grip spot that makes quiet playing easy. The second one is the grip spot that makes loud playing easy. And then thirdly, we have to talk about how to seamlessly and fluidly transition between these two grips so that you can switch around on the fly because inevitably different songs are gonna require different grips. So keeping that in mind, first we have to break down the fact that there is no one best place to grip your sticks. So let's talk about why that is. So you saw in the thumbnail, the two different grip spots and the question marks next to them, as well as the title of this lesson, the best place to grip your sticks. Well, the thing is there, the best place to grip your sticks depends on what volume you're playing and what kind of thing you're playing, whether you're playing loud or soft or fast or slow. So really there are two main best places. So if you learn these two best spots to grip your sticks and then how to transition between them, you're gonna be in great shape. Step one, the grip spot that makes quiet playing easy. So one of the most common issues and challenges that every drummer runs into, especially beginners, is that whenever we need to play softly, the sticks just feel clunky and clumsy. And I think that's why so many drummers overplay and default to playing loudly, because they feel like they can't control the sticks well and play in a nice, smooth, precise manner when playing softly. It's hard to play softly, it's tricky. And a lot of times it's just because you're not actually gripping the sticks where you ought to. It's usually that simple of a reason. So what we wanna do, just go through this with me. Grab your stick so you can follow along. We're gonna do a couple of things here. And the first thing is we wanna find the balance point of our stick. So on a Vic Firth, this is a 5A maple stick. That balance point is like right between Vic and Firth, right between those two words. So it's almost halfway up the stick. You know, the butt end's heavier, so you're gonna be closer to the butt end. But figure out where that is. So if you were to grip your stick right here, it would almost be like playing in a zero gravity environment because the stick doesn't really drop back down, right? Because that's the center point. So obviously that doesn't really work. So what you wanna do is then, so we've got our, our grip point here if we wanted that perfect balance, but we need a little bit of downward motion. We need some throw so we're not in zero gravity. So slide your grip about three finger widths down, which lands us about right here. On a Vic first stick, that's generally between the H and the American flag. If your sticks are Regal Tip or Promark, totally fine. Um, it is nice having these reference points here. You'll find your own reference points on whatever brand of sticks you're using. But once you slide down about three finger widths, then you find you're at a spot where, okay, we're definitely not close to that balance point anymore, but the stick still has this nice, loose, sort of fluid feel to it, where it's almost like you can play in slow motion and it doesn't just go boom. It doesn't just flop down. It actually feels like it has some life and energy to it just on its own. And that's that sweet spot we wanna find for the soft playing. The reason why this works is it basically just makes the stick smaller. I mean, think about this from a mechanical standpoint. If you're gripping the stick down here, you've got a big, long, heavy stick that's just gonna flop into, slam into whatever you're playing. But if you grip further up here, you've essentially made the stick smaller. It's like a mechanical advantage sort of thing. You engineers out there, this is the kind of thing that you're really good at thinking through and analyzing. Think about that, how when you slide further up, the stick essentially has gotten smaller. And so you can make a big, heavy stick actually feel really light and work really well for quiet and fast playing 
when you slide your fulcrum up, and that's really cool. And so you'll find when you're gripping up here, you can easily just do a free bounce like this, just dropping the stick, letting it bounce, and easily just have this slow motion sort of feel. And as you're working on increasing your speed, you'll find that it's a lot easier to play quietly and quickly when you're gripping up here versus down near the end. I'll link some other lessons in the description if you're wanting to go that direction toward building speed and working in the fingers, because that's a really good application for gripping further up if you're doing quiet and fast. But what if you're wanting to play loudly? Because sometimes another problem on the whole flip side of this, another problem is that sometimes we're trying to play loudly, we need to play loudly, but then we feel sort of clumsy and caveman-like when we're trying to get loud because we feel like the sticks just aren't really working for us. We're kind of just you know slamming into things and we're not getting much rebound. And so that can be a tricky thing too. So step number two, the grip spot that makes loud playing easy. Because the problem is usually that playing loudly can feel cumbersome and actually be more difficult if you're not gripping in the right spot. I've noticed if I'm trying to play loudly but I'm gripping the stick right here, then I actually have to work harder. And so what we actually wanna do here is optimize your grip more for throw rather than rebound. So in the previous step, we were optimizing for rebound, right? By getting as close to that balance point as possible where it still works and still feels right. But now if we're gonna play hard, we actually want more stick to work with. We want a longer, heavier stick, right? Otherwise, we have to work harder to get more volume and to get more throw. Just, just think about it. It's like if you're trying to hammer, if you're trying to hammer a really big nail into a piece of wood and you have a tiny little hammer, that's actually gonna be more difficult than if you've got a big hammer that you can just lay into there with a couple of whacks. I know a lot of professional contractors can hammer a, like a two inch nail into a piece of wood in two strokes because they've got a big heavy hammer, they're gripping it near the end, and so it's got all this force. And so we don't always wanna equate drumming to hammering because we wanna be more musical and precise in the way we play. But when you're playing loudly, and especially if you're playing big backbeats with rim shots, you kinda of wanna think a little bit along those lines where you actually wanna grip further down closer to the butt end. So start by gripping where you barely see any extra stick down here coming out of your hand. You know, when we're gripping softly, we're up here and we've got like two or three inches to spare coming out down here. But now grip where you barely see any extra stick. And now what I want you to do, so if you're sitting at your drum set, you can test this out. You can, what I, what I always want you doing is playing along with me, testing these things out so that when you're like, Steven, this is weird, this doesn't make sense, let me try it. Then you can try it and actually see, okay, this does make sense. If you're gripping right here, so if you're going back to our soft grip, that works well for the free bounce, right? Just letting the stick drop, really fluid, relaxed feel. We can just float around the kit slowly and softly and effortlessly. Now, okay, switch down to here. Now, try hitting really hard on the snare, especially like a rim shot. And what you'll find is it actually is not that difficult to get a really loud, firm sort of sound or even a firm cymbal crash Hit a cymbal like that, practice swiping the stick off the cymbal. And you'll find you get more cymbal response more easily too because there's more weight and momentum going in there without as much effort on your part. Because if you're gripping up here, you're having to work harder to go mm, into the cymbal. But if you're back here, you can kind of just swipe it right off and there's this, this momentum in the stick that actually gives you a better sound especially the same with rim shots. If you've, if you've got like a practice pad on here, you can practice going like this and hitting the shaft of the stick, the shaft and the shoulder onto the pad, like that, instead of the tip. So this would be just the tip. Much more quiet, now the whole edge of the stick. That's a good way to mentally, like muscle memory wise, practice rim shots on a practice pad, by the way, when there's not a physical rim. That's actually a really practical way to do it. And you'll find when you're gripping down here, you can easily just throw it down and it just tends to naturally settle into that without, it doesn't require a whole lot of effort. And why is that? It's because we've made the stick bigger. We've adjusted our, our hinge point from here down to here. So now essentially the stick has gotten a lot bigger and a lot heavier, even if it's the same size stick. So now we have more throw, potentially less rebound, but when we're playing really hard, that's a sacrifice we're willing to make because a lot of times when we're playing very hard, we have our drums tuned lower as well. If you're tuning drums lower, you're having to hit them harder to pull more sound out of them. And so gripping down here totally makes sense because you're laying into them more rather than glancing off of them. I know that's kind of a topic for another video talking about loud versus soft playing and tuning accordingly. But generally speaking, when you're playing softly, you wanna tune your drums higher so that you've got more tone when you hit them lightly. It doesn't take much of a, a hit on a drum head to get a nice tone if they're tuned high. 
But if your drums are tuned low, you really have to hit harder to really get that head moving enough to extract a lot of tone. And so if you're hitting hard, your drums are gonna be tuned lower, therefore you wanna lay into them more, not bury the stick in the drum, we're still going like that. We still wanna pull the sound out thinking that way, but we can really lay into it more with more energy and get more of that full tone out, likewise with the snare playing rim shots. So those are the two grips. I hope you've stuck with me. I hope this is making sense. We wanna grip further up the stick to make quiet playing easy. We wanna grip further down the stick to make loud playing easy. Test it out for yourself. You're gonna find this to be so true and so helpful. This has been, like, no kidding, this has been game changing for so many students where I, I show this to them and then they're like, wait a second. Wow, I have so much more control of playing softly now. Oh, okay, now it feels so much better playing rim shots. Try it out for yourself. It's gonna help you so much. But of course, the big question, the big problem we still might run into is, well, what if you're playing a song that has really loud parts and really soft parts? What then? Because most songs are like that. Most songs have a lot of dynamics. I play a bunch of worship music in church and we play songs that have huge dynamic range where, you know, one minute we're like, I'm playing lightly on the ride. And then 30 seconds later, we're going boom, boom, boom into this big build and then huge group. Big rim shots, I love that huge dynamic range, and that's something we encounter a lot in modern worship music. And any kind of rock style, you're gonna have a lot of that. So you've gotta be prepared to make adjustments and actually go from one grip point to the other. And that's where a lot of people will get tripped up because it's one thing to say, all right, I'm gonna grip here, let's make sure my hands stay in place, I'm watching my hands while I play. It's a whole other thing to actually switch grips while you're playing. So let me break this down a little for you and show you how this might work. It's really not as difficult as you'd think. We don't wanna overthink this. All we wanna practice doing is shimmying our hand up and down the stick. And so kind of a side note, I have another lesson here on the channel about dealing with stick slippage. And the funny thing is there's a lot of crossover between this lesson and that one because in dealing with stick slippage, we're, we're basically trying to figure out, all right, how can I keep my hand from sliding? I'm so tired of my hand sliding up and down the stick. How do I keep it from happening? And the thing is, some stick slippage will be inevitable. You need to learn how to compensate for it and how to correct it. But sometimes you want that slippage to happen intentionally so you can go from here to here and back to here. So that's the interesting thing. And so what I'm showing you today is gonna help you deal with that if you've dealt with stick slippage. Now as a side note, breathe on your hands a little bit, put some lotion on, spill a little bit of sugary soda on your hands, whatever you gotta do to help you grip better just so that you're not losing control of the sticks, that alone can help a lot. But once you've done that, once you've optimized your hands, maybe you, you got a pair of those Vic Grip sticks. I think I've got one down here. Um, sticks like this that have some grip that make it easier to hold on. Sometimes that can be helpful. Let's say you've done all that. Then what you wanna practice doing is intentionally going back and forth between our loud grip and our soft grip. Now, when we're going from soft to loud, it's pretty easy to do this. Cause if we sit here playing singles, just watch this. Wow, I, went, I actually went a little too far. I even overcompensated there. It's really easy to go from here down to here as you get louder because the stick wants to fly out, right? It's, that, it's the centripetal force. You know, when you're moving like this, the stick wants to keep going that way, so it wants to slide its way out of your hand. So the thing to practice is controlling that, gripping loose enough to allow a little bit of intentional stick slippage as you get louder. See how it's just gonna happen without you worrying too much about it. Before you know it, you've slid down to here. And if you continue to get louder and maybe go to rim shots, slide down a little bit further. Just practice doing that. Just doing singles, bum, 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 bum. Decide that, okay, over eight hits, so a measure of eighth notes, I'm gonna go from here down to here. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Cool. And then practice going the other direction, which is a little bit more challenging because. We have to then, that's where the shimmying really comes into play, where we have to actively crawl up the stick. So if we start right here, playing loudly, then as we get softer, we're kind of having to go like this. And so as silly as this seems, it seems like a preschool exercise, but yet it's so practical and so helpful. Sit here and practice going like this. Like, can, can you do like a little bug, like a little worm crawling up your stick? And just go like that. Figure out whatever, what does your hand need to do to crawl up the stick? That simple. And so practice doing that, and then, Practice doing that while playing singles. One and two and three and four and, and even like practice going crazy with it, just overcompensating, going crazy far up the stick just to prove to yourself, okay, I can do this. One and two and three while getting softer. 
one and two and see you, you can find okay once you get the hang of it you can get ridiculous with it and just keep going so then what you want to do is practice controlling it and saying okay over two bars or one measure of eighth notes whatever you want to do practice saying i'm going to start right here and then i'm going to land right here so let's do two measures of eighth notes one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so I ended up, I got pretty close. Maybe I could have gone a little bit farther, but that felt about right to me. You'll find that you kind of just land on a spot that feels right. And what's really cool is that the more you do this, the more you develop a feel for where your hand needs to be. You'll be playing, you'll be playing a song and you'll think, hmm, it doesn't quite feel right. Let me just adjust. Oh, there we go. That's right. And the more you do it, the less you have to think about it because it becomes a muscle memory kind of thing where that shimmying or that letting the stick slide out as you get louder, that just becomes a natural response. So really your, your final action and exercise for this would be alternating singles, starting softly, giving yourself two bars to get loud, so then you've slid out to here, and then two bars to get soft again. So it might look something like this. A really big practical application of this and where I find myself adjusting grips the most while playing a song is my timekeeping hand. If I'm keeping quick time, whether it's on the ride or on the hats, it's always easier to play quickly if you don't have to play really loudly when your, your grip is further up the stick. But if I then come over to the snare to like play back beats, to play rim shots, so then I've got to make that adjustment because if I'm trying to play a rim shot from right here, it's going to feel really stiff and sloppy. But then if I go to here, well, then it feels natural. So that's always a tricky thing where if I'm playing over here on the ride, if I go to the snare, I have to automatically adjust to right here. And so that's something else intentional to practice doing. Practice grooving, boom. Practice adjusting to right here as soon as your right hand moves over. It's kind of tricky to do at first, but the more you do this, the more you get into the habit of, okay, when I'm keeping time, I'm gonna be further up. That's where my hand wants to grip when I'm keeping time. But when I'm playing a big fill, when I'm going around the kit, I want a nice big even sound, nice strong rim shots, then I wanna automatically adjust to where both hands are right here. Because you do wanna make sure you're gripping in the same spot on both sticks if you're playing, if you're wanting the same sound from both of your hands. And so that's kind of the challenge. That's something not, it is, it, this is very under talked about. Nobody really seems to talk about this in YouTube lessons and I just had to figure this out for myself. So trust me, I've, I've been there. I understand the struggle of figuring this out because I, I started realizing, well, in order to keep time, I really need to be here. And so my hands would both look like this while playing a song. And so I thought, well, is that incorrect? Is that bad? Is that wrong that my grip is different on this hand versus this one? It's not academically correct. But you do what you gotta do. If this helps you play more quickly over here or right here while maintaining a strong backbeat, there's no problem there. Do that, do what you gotta do there. But if you then wanna play even, even singles on the snare, then you have to adjust like that. And so that's something you have to intentionally practice, just going from the ride right here to the snare right here. So just do it, practice it, you will get better at it. Trust me, you will build that muscle memory and this will help you out so much. This really will take you from that, just that confused like stick working against you and not for you clumsy sort of caveman feel where you can't get fluidity and precision when playing softly and then your loud playing feels too forced and just doesn't feel natural. This will help you get from there to your sticks working for you where you confidently know exactly where to grip. It really is game changing, trust me. I hope you've been following along here as you're playing on your pad, as you're testing this out and you're finding, hey, this really does help. So then practice applying it to the kit with that timekeeping hand. You'll find that gripping up here helps with the quick timekeeping and then shimmying back down to here for the big snare fills. It's gonna help you out a whole bunch. So my question for you as we wrap up, because we always wanna be thinking about music and songs and how we're applying what we learn. Can you think of a favorite song where you might need to use both of these grips? My guess is that most any rock song, like any song that has a pretty you know, loud, steady rock groove, you're gonna wanna go back and forth between them because for your timekeeping hand, you probably wanna grip further up here, but there's probably gonna be some fills where maybe there's a snare flam or a something like that, where then you wanna make that adjustment. So maybe you hadn't ever thought about how this song might require both grips, but now, now that you know this, think through, okay, what are some favorite songs that I love listening to and that I maybe already know on the drums or that I've played a bunch that might require a soft grip 
and a loud grip and going back and forth between them. Better yet, bonus points, is there a song that has a build where you're going or something like that because that's an even better challenge to really practice this and apply it to music. Think of a song, because when you got a song, then you're actually gonna work on this because you're gonna have more fun doing it and you're gonna be more motivated. So tell me in the comments, what is that favorite song? What's the favorite song where maybe you, you've got some loud playing and some soft playing and you can practice mixing all these together? But know that you can do this. Take this to the practice room, take action, have fun working on this. This is gonna help you feel so much more confident and solid and precise in your playing. I really hope this, is, this lesson's been super valuable to you. As always, stay non-glamorous. Know that you can do this. I'll see you on the next lesson.